Happy birthday as well. You always find the latest courtyard. Even in solution. In out of the box. Hello and welcome to Ready Waves by Todd If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon to miss any of my future videos. In front of us, we have the Texan DR920C. It's an AM, FM, shortwave, portable radio. I got this radio for $25 from Amazon last year, and it still sells for $25. A really cool radio, and we'll go over its features. This is a revisit episode. I had reviewed this last year. We're going to do it again. So here it is, Texan DR920C. The box real quick. If you look, there's the breakdown of the bands. The shortwave bands, uh, you got 10 of them. If you look, they're identical to the R9012s shortwave band, so it has the same coverage as that radio. I'll show that radio to you in a moment. The box is pretty much all Chinese. The neat thing is, when you buy this radio off Amazon, you will get instructions in English. But this radio doesn't require much as far as operation goes. So let's go ahead and open this up. So we get in the box. Always fun to unbox radios. Some paperwork there. Let's get that out of there. So English instructions, I think that's empty. Okay. So first thing is the neat thing I like is, uh, this is from Kato. So when you order this radio from Amazon, and I'll put links down below if you really like this radio and you want to support the channel, uh, feel free to use the link. Um, you get this uh, little survey and you get a one-year warranty from them. And they're right in California, so you don't have to mess around with sending it back to, to China or dealing with all that hassle. So yeah, you get back by a warranty there, and they're a great company. They'll answer the phone when you call them, so that's a bonus. Okay, uh, here is the manual they give you in English, which is great. That is a bonus in my book to see that. <laughs> when the box is all Chinese, you know, I expect to see a Chinese manual, but they went the extra mile and did a uh, English manual here. Now, if you look on the back here, specifications, um, it shows us frequency coverage. Again, just like it did on the box and, of course, on the back of the radio. Here we have some power consumption. Output power sounds about right. Speaker sounds about right. And there it shows what it runs on two AA batteries. Uh, let me just kind of just show you the manual you know, once over. That way you just have it on record here. There's a description of the controls. Pretty basic. We'll go over all those. What the LCD display looks like. This radio is a very interesting radio. It is an analog radio with a digital frequency counter. Um, very neat setup. Uh, and I'll explain that to you if you don't know what that means. A lot of you do. Uh, but uh, what it is, it's an analog dial, uh, analog tuning, excuse me, with a frequency uh, displayed in digital format. So it still tunes like an analog radio, which people really love. They don't want to see it go away. And this is one of the few radios that does that. There you go. I'm just kind of showing you the manual here so you have all that. Okay, so that's the manual. Let's get to the radio. Here's the radio. It comes in a nice little pouch, nice little touch. And I'll take that out of there. Comes another plastic bag. I pre installed the two AA batteries and I set the clock. So let's go over dimensions really quick here. This is uh, five and a quarter inches across, including the tuning knob here. We have three and one eighth of an inch tall and a case depth of one inch. Okay, let's bring out a few radios to compare this to. The big one is how does it compare to the R9012? And here it is. So this is like identical radio. It has the exact same frequency coverages as this radio does in here, but this just has an LCD display. So if you have a hard time reading the small numbers, this may be the way to go because it has identical performance. One thing difference here you'll notice is the tuning indicator on the R9012 is missing from the 920C. One thing I noticed, you may or may not miss that. I kind of miss it. I wish this radio had it, but uh, they probably trying to cut corners on costs so you don't have to keep increasing the price. So they left that off, but that would have been nice to see. A tuning indicator also on this radio, but uh, there you go for that. And then next, I have the CC Skywave, another shortwave radio. This is a little higher end premium, just to give you an idea of what that radio looks like for size comparison. I believe the Skywave is a bit thicker. There you go. Okay, and then uh, of course, we have the Invincible Iron Man. He's the man with the master plan, he can beat him up like no one can. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Take a cards. With the radio there you go all right so features of this radio let's go over them um, it has a few and it's fun 
Uh, first, we have a carry strap on the left-hand side here, which is very convenient. I do use this as I walk, just in case it slips out of my hand. I do have something to grab onto. Plus, you can hang this from a door handle or a hook or somewhere if you're working on something. On the left-hand side, we have the volume control, which is nice, wide, uh, very easy to use. I like that. Here we have a headphone jack. Um, in my initial review of this radio, I mentioned the uh, hiss was bad and this and that, but it actually isn't that bad. Um, when you're listening to the AM and shortwave bands, it's actually pleasing. It's a little on the uh, low side, low tone. Might be a little muffled, but that's okay, especially with shortwave when sometimes the static comes in and out. It's better to have a low tone than a high pitch tone. FM sounds fantastic. Uh, the mid range is great. Uh, I'm not a fan of a lot of lows, so if you like a lot of lows, this radio is not for you. But if you like mids, definitely it's really nice with headphones on FM. Uh, here we have a DC input of 3 volts. It's got an interesting polarity, the center pole negative, outside is positive. Okay, so you can run this radio. It says in the manual, if you plug in the DC adapter, it automatically disengages the internal battery. So you can leave the batteries installed, plug that in. It doesn't charge anything. It'll just run off the AC power there, which is nice. In front of the radio, we have Texan DR920C. We have a 2-inch speaker there, similar to the R9012s. Here we have the frequency counter and the clock, which is really nice. Um, below it, we have some buttons, alarm on off, alarm set. You can set this radio uh, to wake up to radio with the alarm feature. So you have your favorite station and the right volume, and you set your alarm and it'll wake, you, wake up to radio, which is nice. Here's your time set button and hour minutes. It's pretty simple. You just hold the one button and press these two buttons. It's very basic to set the alarm and set the time. Here we have a light feature. You press this and a little amber side light comes on, which is very, very nice to have, especially in a radio like this, inexpensive. Um, it lights up for 10 seconds and turns off. Uh, you will notice a little sound, like a little static sound on AM or medium wave when that light disengages. Um, it's just normal, but it's, it's only like a 10 second thing. So only when it disengages. A really cool button here is the sleep function, which I didn't expect on a radio like this. The sleep function is neat. So when the power is off, you hit the sleep function, it'll turn the radio on for about a, an hour. And you can change it up to two hours. So with the hour and minute buttons. So it has up to an hour and 59 minutes, which I thought was pretty cool setup. Digital world receiver. Here we have our band select switch. We have 12 bands, FM, medium wave, and 10 shortwave bands. This side here, we have our tuning wheel. It has a little bit of backlash to it, similar to the R9012s. Uh, it's not too bad, but you do notice it on the frequency counter when you're trying to fine tune it. Not a big deal since this is an all analog radio. Um, you don't have to be dead on frequency, even though this digital display is very accurate. Uh, here we have our on off switch. Back of the radio, you'll see the antenna. Uh, it pivots 360 degrees and extends out to 22 inches, so it has decent reception on the whip. Here we have the kick out stand. This uh, has all the information on the bands. So let's look here. You can see the FM band, medium wave band, and short wave band. Though if you look at the way they have it covered, it's very tiny amounts. Like the 75 meter band is 3.9 to 4, 60 meter band. You can see how narrow these are. It's actually not too bad when you're tuning them because you can really fine tune those stations in if they're in those areas. This is a popular band. Glad to see 9.5 to 9.9. .9. I would like to see 9.2 or 9.3 to 9.9 .9, because there are some stations just below that that I like to listen to. But you can see how that's structured. That's similar to the R9012 if you're using the R9012 and you want a little bit of an upgrade. Here is your two AA batteries. They go in the battery compartment here. Um, you can see the polarity there. The battery, the positives point to the right-hand side of the radio. And there's the diagram right there. Okay, an invented case. So let's go ahead and talk about FM reception, and then we'll go ahead and do a little uh, radio Totterbird on this radio, and then we'll go from there. So first things first, uh, FM reception report. FM sensitivity. Now, the R9012 and this radio sometimes suffer from FM reception, but when I was up there uh, today and sitting back and tuning through the stations slowly and moving the whip and, and really understanding this radio more, I was able to get 54 stations. So I got above average rating for this radio. Um, I rated on a five-tier scale, fair, okay, good, very good, and excellent. And okay and good right in the middle is where most uh, analog radios fall into This one, with 48 stations. This one got a little bit more than 48, this got 54, so it rates just above the average, which is great. Um, didn't expect that. Um, FM selectivity was okay to good. Did have a hard time picking out stations on FM, uh, but that's a different story on the medium wave. Medium wave is very selective and still a short wave. So just similar to the R9012, it excels on medium wave and short wave, but falls a bit short on the FM on selectivity. This radio, not too bad though on the FM. I was pretty impressed, especially with the headphones. Sounded great. So let's go ahead and turn it on. 
and turn this music. Jam it away. So what I'm using to put music here is a C-Crane FM Transmitter 2 hooked up to an MP3 player playing YouTube download music, which is royalty free. Let's move that out of the way. That way I can avoid uh, copyright issues, um, which typically will ban this video from certain countries. You can see one FM, 97.7, where my C-Crane's on. Megahertz there, so it shows your display. I don't think it shows clock. Let's hit this. Yeah, you can't show the clock while the radio's on. We'll run this for a few minutes. Touching the antenna. to the FM reception. Yeah, I'm pretty close to the transmitter, so when I was moving the radio around, it cut out because I was kind of blocking it and touching the antenna. So let's go ahead and turn off that transmitter and go ahead and fire up the shortwave on this radio. So what we're going to do is we're just going to extend this out a little bit here, and I'm going to hook up a little wire. I have a little Texan PL380 wire, which is about, I think, 10 feet long, 10 or 12 feet long, strung up in my uh, window blinds facing the west. And uh, they're inside the house, so it's not outside, so it's a very typical setup. Uh, it really helps to get a little extra range. Uh, it's something that's easily done. Let me just uh, quick get this wire. Of course, with the radio bench, it's wires everywhere. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and snap this on here. And we'll see what we can hear on the shortwave band. I'm not, I haven't really tested that too much on this radio. But I did do medium wave, which is amazing, and we'll do that too. So let's go ahead and switch this to... Now the time was, um, well I can turn the radio on and off, but we'll just check it with the Skywave. Time is 4.15, 
uh, p.m. Central Daylight Savings Time near Chicago, Illinois. Give you an idea of my location. Let's go ahead and shortwave. Let's say towards the top of the band. I don't think we're going to hear Now, last night, of course, this was coming nice, loud, and clear. Tune through these bands a little bit. I found that the shortwave display is very accurate too. With the digital display, just an amazing radio. Again, if you're not wanting the traditional analog dial, this is a great option for you. Just hearing some faint music on that static. Let's go through a few of these bands and hit the medium mic. This is interesting. Okay, so 10 megahertz. Didn't show that I would be able to do this. See how far up this goes and how far down this goes in this band. Okay, so it tops out right about there. Let's go down. So right here, 9420, a lot of guys would know what this is. This is usually Voice of Greece. I'm not hearing anything now, but yeah, this is cool. So it is lower than advertised. Okay, good. I was just looking over at the 9012, and its uh, band coverage is showing 9.25 to 9.95, but on the back here it has a similar chart uh, where it shows only 9.5 to 9.9. .9. So yeah, um, we're getting better than advertised, which is good. So I think this is WRMI, I think. A little bit of imaging. It's typical on a single uh, conversion receiver like this. If this is dual conversion, you probably wouldn't have heard that. Well, as well. So this band's almost uh, 
full uh, mega work. That's cool. It's almost from 9 to 10. That's great. Okay, cool. Let's go up one. Look at the bottom of this band. And since this is identical, I'll look it up here. So on the, uh, let's see, 25 meter band, it shows 1165 to 1205. And you can see we're starting at 1144. A little faint station there. Faint one here. So there you go, not bad coverage. Okay, I think we'll go one more step real fast. We're at the top of this band. So we're picking up 15 megahertz there. Let's go to the bottom. A lot of motion. On the knob, but very small increments up here, which isn't bad. It was a busy or congested band. That's just his uh, we're putting this as a generous. We know that he died at 5 30. This is the man who I. minutos después del despegue. En honor a la verdad, no estamos ante el reconocimiento. Well, that's finished here. Let's see if it goes to 15 megahertz. Right at the bottom. Very nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch to medium wave. Uh, medium wave is where this radio shines. Um, amazing reception I get uh, during the day and the evening. Uh, in the evening it really wakes up, but during the day it's not too bad with the passive loop. We'll just scroll through it pretty quick and then we'll do final thoughts. This is WIMB Chicago. <clears throat> the answer, like you said. I'm going to scroll the local stations here. Deposits rated higher by 1.4 percent. President Donald Trump announced that there will be an. 620 is WTMJ, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. G20 summit in Japan. Reports from. Of course, I'm going to follow this video up with uh, two band scans: morning or daytime and evening medium wave, so you get an idea what this can do, and we'll spend a lot of time with that. Of Napa conventional motor oil for just eleven ninety nine. That's a pretty unbelievable deal. This is six seventy. The score WSCR, Chicago, Illinois, home of the Cubs. Only for a limited time. So get your five four jug of Napa. It's got decent audio. Eleven ninety nine today. Quality parts, helpful people. That's Napa know how. Changes to do. Simple as that. And so when it's the off season, um, I knew that my arm action was too long. WGN, Chicago, Illinois. Be on time with my arm. And so I went to WNDZ, Portage, Indiana. Okay, 
19 to 390, about an hour from 390, 45 in from Mannheim. Stevenson's out. It's an hour and 30. To get 780 WBM Chicago. Chicago. An hour coming in from veterans. Get traffic and weather together on the 8th. Every 10 minutes on News Radio 780 and 105.9 FM tonight. Nice smooth analog tuning. I love it. Would you like to learn how money is really made? WCPT, Willow Springs, Illinois, about 40 miles away. Music on WAIT, Crystal Lake, Illinois. Heading out to Iowa working on This is WLS, Chicago. A high pitch wine coming from the camera. And some of the artifacts you're hearing, like the little ticking sounds, are probably coming from the camera also. Because I did not notice that uh, during. Uh, the other two sessions I use this radio with. There are some Milwaukee stations and Madison stations. And we'll spend some more time on those later. Cash back from Toyota Motor Sales USA in town payment may be required. Must be part of the transaction. No cash payment will be made to consumer. This is WMVP, Chicago, Illinois. Um, WNVR, Vernon Hills, Illinois. Yes, I have these written down. <laughs> I'm reading them off. Some of these I remember. <laughs> 1070 here is one of my favorites. NASCAR races on the weekends, golf tournaments, all kinds of fun stuff. Horse racing. It's going to come to dial quick. Yeah, I gotta have the squirrel to be a QR, Sycamore, Illinois. If you guys know, I love my squirrel. <laughs> Fun stuff. I'm just gonna take it to the top of the dial here. It tops out around 1680. As you can tell, it's got quite a few daytime stations. Iron Country. Trying to change them into blue? Or are they... Last station to go pick up is uh, WOZN, Madison, Wisconsin, in 1670. And using a loop really makes a difference. That's where it tops out at 1681.5. All right, let's go ahead and turn this off. Do final thoughts on the Texan DR920C revisit. Yes, I revisited this radio, kind of did my normal uh, review, and I, I like the way I do reviews now, so it's a really comprehensive, so you get an idea of what you're buying when you buy this radio. Would I recommend this radio? Yeah, because it's for 25 bucks. you're getting a unique radio. You're getting an analog radio with digital frequency counter. Again, these are a rare breed nowadays. Um, everything is a very inexpensive radio. I'm just trying to see if I have one handy laying around here. I don't see a very inexpensive one. I know I recently... Oh, yeah, here we go. You guys will recognize this. Oops, got boxes flying everywhere. This is the uh, Tidio V11, a different label. This is a Samir, I think, CS106, same thing. Um, it's all digital. Uh, you don't have the same tuning experience as you have with an analog. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's neat to have options. This is very inexpensive. You can get this for like 11, 12 bucks. Uh, these were on sale, I think, under 10 bucks for a while on Amazon. But, uh, yeah, looking at this radio, uh, this is definitely a better made radio. Feels more substantial. So, definitely one I would recommend uh, for 25 bucks. You know, it's I think it's like 3 or $4 more than this radio. I would definitely go this route here. 
So if you enjoyed the presentation of the DR920C, give me a big like. You guys are awesome. Two, if you enjoy text and radios, if you're new to the channel, you haven't subscribed yet, hit subscribe, hit the bell notifications, turn on all notifications. I typically put out a video every other day, and every other day I do a band scan, and every other day I'll do a new radio or classic radio review. So something to look forward to. All right, guys, of course, comment below what you think about this radio in all its glory. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.